You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You're a peculiar people who have called forth the praises of God. Out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness, into his marvelous light, into his marvelous light. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You're a peculiar people who have called forth the praises of God out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness, into his marvelous light, into his marvelous light. Oh, there's nothing better than the marvelous light of the Lord Jesus Christ. When these light bulbs go on and suddenly the word of God opens up unto you, big as life, as the eternal word, as the creator, as the healer, as the deliverer, everything you want to name that's good. Wow, you can't get enough of the word. That's why we're here this morning on August 2, isn't it? We are here because of the word of God. We desire more. We hunger and thirst for Jesus, for him. We are seeking him. We are seeking his face. We are seeking his voice. We are seeking his ways. We are seeking healing. Pursue. <clears throat> it's the best thing in life to pursue the Lord. And he will take care of all the rest. He will take care of all that concerns you. So no sweat, y'all. Let's enjoy the word of God. <clears throat> Another little song that was spinning in my spirit this morning. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. So let us be about our Father's business. We are reading and continuing in this incredible book, this book of prophecy, this book of history, this book of teaching us so many things, Second Chronicles, and we are up to chapter 32. 32 chapters, wow. Second Chronicles chapter 32. After these deeds of faithfulness, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and he entered Judah. He encamped against the fortified cities, thinking to win them over to himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come, and that his purpose was to make war against Yerushalayim, he consulted with his leaders and commanders to stop the water from the springs which were outside the city, and they helped him. Thus many people gathered together who stopped all the springs and the brook that ran through the land, saying... Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? And he strengthened himself. He built up all the wall that was broken. Mm -mm -mm. Build up all the wall that was broken. Man, that rings in our ears, doesn't it? Raised it up to the towers and built another wall outside. Also, he repaired the Milo, which I understand is the landfill in the city of David. <clears throat> and he made weapons and shields in abundance. Then he set military captains over the people, gathered them together to him in the open square of the city gate, 
and gave them encouragement. Wow, nothing like a good leader who knows how to give out encouragement. And he said, be strong, be strong, be bold, for the Lord thy God is with you. He said, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or dismayed. Do not be afraid, oh no. And do not be dismayed, oh no. Cause you're walking in faith and victory. Yes, you're walking in faith and victory. For the Lord, your God, is with you. Yes. Don't be afraid or dismayed before the king of Assyria, nor before all the multitude that is with him, for there are more with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the people were strengthened by the words of Hezekiah, king of Judah. And after this, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, sent his servants to Jerusalem. But he and all the forces with him laid siege against Jericho, that beautiful city of palms, to Hezekiah, king of Judah, and to all Judah who were in Jerusalem, saying, Thus says Sennacherib, king of Assyria, in what do you trust that you remain under siege in Jerusalem? Does not Hezekiah persuade you to give yourselves over to die by famine and by thirst, saying, The Lord our God will deliver us from the hand of the king of Assyria? Hmm. The Lord is listening to this mocking. Has not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars? He certainly did. And commanded Judah and Jerusalem, saying, You shall worship before one altar and burn incense on it. Do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples? of other lands? Were the gods of the nations of those lands in any way able to deliver their lands out of my hand? Who was there among all the gods of those nations that my fathers utterly destroyed that could deliver his people from my hand? That your God should be able to deliver you from my hand? <clears throat> oh, I bet you there was a stirring in the throne room over that one. Now, therefore, do not let Hezekiah deceive you or persuade you like this. And do not believe him, for no god of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people from my hand or from the hand of my father. Fathers, plural. How much less will your God deliver you from my hand? Boy, this, this man has a head so big he couldn't get it through a doorway. Furthermore, his servants spoke against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. He also wrote letters to revile the Lord God of Israel and to speak against him saying, as the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people from my hand, so the God of Hezekiah will not deliver his people from my hand. Wrote all that down. And then they called out with a loud voice in Hebrew to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall to frighten them and trouble them, that they might take the city. And they spoke against the God of Jerusalem as against the gods of the people of the earth. 
the work of men's hands. <clears throat> now, because of this, King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, ooh, we have big prophetic guns now. The prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, prayed and cried out to heaven. <clears throat> and then, in answer to that, just as a fantastic example for you and me of the power of prayer. And sometimes it isn't just praying some words. Sometimes it's crying out. Crying out. Then the Lord sent an angel who cut down every mighty man of valor, leader, and captain in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned shamefaced to his own land. Whoa. You know, pride is what caused all the fall to start with, right? Oh, Satan boasting. Oh, he's going to sit on the throne. And the Lord cast him to the earth to be miserable. Well, when that happens to you as a person, shame comes to your face. If you're not too far gone. So he returned shamefaced to his own land. And when he had gone into the temple of his God, some of his own offspring, some of his own kids, struck him down with the sword there. <clears throat> God answered all of his bragging, didn't he? Thus the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria. And he was bragging about how he had him in his hand. And from the hand of all others and guided them on every side. And many brought gifts to the Lord at Jerusalem and presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations thereafter. And in those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And he prayed to the Lord. And he spoke to him and gave him a sign. But Hezekiah did not repay according to the favor shown him. What? Excuse me? For his heart was lifted up. Spirit of pride came rushing in. Therefore, wrath was looming over him and over Judah and Jerusalem. And then Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart. Ah, good lesson for us. Humbled himself for the pride of his heart, he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord did not come upon them in the days of Hezekiah. Hezekiah had very great riches and honor and he made himself treasuries for silver, for gold, for precious stones, for spices, for shields, and for all kinds of desirable items, storehouses for the harvest of grain, wine, and oil, and stalls for all kinds of livestock, and folds for flocks. Moreover, he provided cities for himself and possessions of flocks and herds in abundance. For God had given him very much property. This same Hezekiah also stopped the water outlet of Upper Gihon and brought the water by tunnel to the west side of the city of David 
Hezekiah prospered in all his works. When he got himself in trouble, he would repent. Hallelujah. However, whoops, however, regarding the ambassadors of the princess of Babylon, whom they sent to him to inquire about the wonder that was done in the land, God withdrew from him in order to test him. You know, some of the things that happen to us it's a test. We get our eyes on the tool, on destruction, and it's a test. That he might know all that was in his heart. That's what the Lord's after, isn't he? Our heart. All of it. Now, the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and his goodness, indeed, they are written in the vision of Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, and in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. So Hezekiah rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the upper tombs of the sons of David. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem honored him at his death. And then the Da, da, da. Manasseh, his son, reigned in his place. And we move along <clears throat> to chapter 33. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king. 12 years old, just a boy. And he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. But he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, how can that be? We wonder, don't we? Twelve years he grew up watching his father do good things. Evil mother, evil friends, Satan with a big hook. But he did evil in the sight of the Lord according to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he rebuilt the high places. Had to be an idol-worshipping mom or something. He rebuilt the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had broken down. <clears throat> he raised up the altars for the Baals and made wooden images. And he worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served them. He also built altars in the house of the Lord. Whoa! Of which the Lord had said, in Jerusalem shall my name be forever. And he built altars for all the hosts of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. Went in there and perverted that temple. Also he caused his sons to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. He practiced soothsaying, used witchcraft and sorcery. He consulted mediums and spiritus. Spiritus. Mediums. Witchcraft. He did much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. He even set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. And I will not again remove the foot of Israel from the land which I have appointed for your fathers, only if they are careful to do all that I have commanded them. According to the whole law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hands of Moshe, Moses. So Manasseh, 
seduced Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to do more evil than the nations whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. See how one evil person, if you're not strong in your roots, in righteousness, in right standing with God, in right righteousness of living life, we need to be strong, don't we? Because we have evil ones, don't we, at the top, who are trying desperately to seduce us. And the Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people. How about that? But they would not listen. Therefore, the Lord brought upon them the captains of the army of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh with hooks. Took him with hooks bound him with bronze fetters and carried him off to Babylon. Now, when he was in affliction, he implored the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers and prayed to him. And he received his entreaty, heard his supplication, and guess what the Lord did? He brought him back to Jerusalem into his kingdom. And then Manasseh knew that the Lord was God. I mean, took him out of a foreign land who had put fetters on him. He was, he was bound. He was in prison. And the Lord did things to release all that and bring him back. Oh, the goodness of our Lord. The goodness of our Lord. Don't give up. Don't give up on anything. If you're discouraged this morning, the Lord sees. Implore him. Come to him. Call out to him. This is a good lesson for us in life. He can and he will change situations if we have faith, and if we pray and ask. Oh, hallelujah. Such encouragement. All right, y'all, we move along to the New Testament. We are in the wonderful book of Romans. We are reading chapter 15, picking up this morning with verse 23. 15, 23. But now, no longer having a place in these parts, and having a great desire these many years to come to you, whenever I journey to Spain, Paul says, I shall come to you, for I hope to see you on my journey and to be helped on my way there by you, if first I may enjoy your company for a while. <clears throat> and so here we have evidence of Paul as a missionary, Asking for support. Asking for help. That wasn't prideful. He had to have means to go do what the Lord wanted him to do. So that's the way we ought to think about our missionaries today. But now I am going to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. For it pleased those from Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are in Jerusalem. It pleased them indeed, and they are their debtors. For of the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things. No, if, excuse me, let out an important word. For if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister to them in material things. Therefore, when I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I shall go by way of you to Spain. But I know that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness 
of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful statement of faith. Now, I beg you, Paul says, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me, that I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, that I may come to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. Now the God of peace be with you all. Y'all, be with y'all. Amen. And we move along to chapter 16. I commend to you Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church in Sencria. I hope I'm saying that halfway right. That you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and assist her in whatever business she has need of you. For indeed, she has been a helper of many and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risk their own necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Greet my beloved Epaphnitus, who is the first fruits of Achaia to Christ. Greet Mary, who labored much for us. Greet Andronicus and Unia, my countrymen and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. Greet Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and Stachus, and I'm, I'm never sure I'm pronouncing that right. I need, to, I need to Google that one. I need to look it up. Stachus, my beloved. Oh, what a sweet letter from Paul. All right, we move right along to Psalm 25. Psalm 25. We've already begun it, and we are picking up this morning with verse 16. Psalm 25, 16. Turn yourself to me and have mercy on me, David cries, for I am desolate and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have enlarged. Bring me out of my distresses. Look on my affliction and my pain and consider and forgive all my sins. Consider my enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. Keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed for I put my trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my mm -hmm, thought out unto thee, unto thee, O Lord, do I put out, give out my trust. Something like that. I'll come up with it. Let not me be ashamed, for I put my trust in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, O oh God, out of all their troubles. It, isn't that beautiful? The end of this beautiful psalm, David turns from himself and his troubles, and he prays for the nation. Redeem Israel, O oh God, out of all their troubles. And we end up with Proverbs chapter 20, verses 16 through 18. Take the garment of one who is surety for a stranger 
and hold it as a pledge when it is for a seductress. Wow. I think that went over, right? And hold it as a pledge when it is for a seductress. Bread gained by deceit is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth will be filled with gravel, the Lord says. Whoa, that's strong, isn't it? It's sweet. Huh, stolen. But afterward, his mouth will be filled with gravel. Plans are established by counsel. By wise counsel, wage war. Wise counsel, wage war. Mm -mm -mm. Don't go into war without a good, strong battle plan. And we can say that about ourselves in the war and the battle against Satan's ways. Let's be wise. Let's have a good battle plan and a good foundation in his word. And we can quote his foundation. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful to you today for your word. Oh my, your word encourages us, lifts us up. Your word spells out truth in every situation for us. So much truth shown here today for us to gather and, and pray about. So, so much encouragement to come to you wholeheartedly in prayer, like we've read about from your former saints. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Lord, we'd ask that you would be with Israel, your people, today in this day and age. Lord, I'm asking that you would lift them up, that you would help and provide for those who are arriving daily from other countries. I thank you, Lord, that that the Jews in Israel have produced a great uh, program, we would say, or a great indoctrinating ways for all of the new people coming to help them in every way, to help them be fed after they arrive, to, to have work for their hands to do, that they might get right on with supporting themselves. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom that they have. There's not chaos, but people come and they settle and plug in their lives in Israel. What a beautiful sight. You are bringing your people home, Lord. You are bringing your people home and you had a wonderful plan all figured out for how to do it. Blessings to you, Lord. We hold up America to you, Lord. We hold up America, and oh my, we are waking up the deceived people of this nation. We are waking them up. You are waking them up by showing them what a failure plan deception is. Deception fails. It's not from the Holy Spirit. It's not from the right spirit. So Lord, Wake up our nation. Wake up our people to see truth and to turn away from all deception and turn to you. Turn to you that you might know your plan for their lives and your plan for this nation. It's all in your hands, Lord. It's all in your hands. We pray. We are praying too, Lord, for, for many, many individual people, many friends, many situations. And precious Lord, this morning I'd like to lift up. Uh, I, I began prayer for her yesterday. This little child, she's three months old, and her name is Charlotte. 
And she's a great granddaughter to our dear friend Kay Crane, who comes on our site a lot. So she's one of our own. And she was born with cancer. Born. A one-day-old baby, and they had to find out this baby had cancer. And these parents are believers. And now she is on her way by ambulance from Alabama up to Tennessee to a special place. So I'm asking you to join me and to keep on, to write her name down, Charlotte. She's three months old, three months old. And she's going up there for treatment, treatment for cancer. Please, Lord. Please, in Jesus' name, we hold up little Charlotte to you. We'd ask, Lord, that you would rid her little body of every single cancer cell. Let them die and be washed out of her very body, her very blood system. Father God, it has been determined that this infection, uh, I don't think I have the right word, but anyway, they were concerned where they would find it and the choice of it being in her blood, they said was the easier one for them to have medicine to help. So Lord, we're asking that everything that they do come from your wisdom. And we're asking Lord, that little Charlotte be healed from the top of her little head down to the very toes and feet of her little three-month-old feet. And Lord, we're asking you, raise her up, strong and mighty. Raise her up, a Mary, a Deborah, well able, well able to magnify you with her life. Oh, we pray, Lord, we pray. Come upon her, Holy Spirit. Even in the ambulance, come upon her. Come upon her and be with her and be with the new medical people. Give them wisdom, Lord, to do what is right. Give them wisdom to every single problem this little tiny baby has. And Lord, let all of them be loving. Let them hold her and talk with her and Father, I'm asking you provide for these parents. Provide. <clears throat> they will have to stay somewhere and eat. And precious God, precious God, raise up supply and protection. Encourage their hearts, Lord, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And Lord... <clears throat> We hold up America. We'd ask, Lord, that righteousness would be restored and, and more than ever before in our history. We want to see righteousness, Lord, in every position in this country. So, Lord, we're asking that you take unrighteous people out, out of office, out of of the city of DC and that particularly with the coming elections that righteous people are brought in righteous people we are believing Lord for great victories and on that note I hold up President Trump and Melania to you and young Baron he's really not young anymore taller than his parents I hold him up. And Lord, we are believing. You are not finished with this little David that you anointed. You anointed to put down all the business, everything he was doing, and come and serve the Americans. And he was serving you. He believes in you. He loves you. So does Melania. Lord, I'm asking you, answer their prayers. 
answer their prayers and restore unto him all that was stolen. We pray this in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and to your glory, Jesus, that you would glorify yourself with these two people, Donald J. Trump and Melania. Lord, have your will and your way in our lives. Have your will and your way, Lord, bringing many to you today. Let a great revival start and spread everywhere where people are just drawn to you like a magnet. They come to you and they cast all their burdens upon you for you care for them. And to all this, Lord, we say amen to all of our prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Have a beautiful day in the Lord. I love you so. Blessings on you. Bye-bye.